Okay, this video is about uh, the energy systems inside muscles and the two different types of fibre that we find in muscles. So this covers the sort of last three sections of this bit about muscles. So, we've got two sorts of muscle fibre. They're genetically determined which sorts are in sort of prominence in your muscles. All of your muscles have both types of fibre in um, and it kind of depends on the function of the muscle. So we've got uh, slow twitch muscles and fast twitch muscles. Now slow twitch muscles are the kinds of muscles that you use to maintain your posture. So you can see that it would be no use whatsoever if these kind of uh, stopped working after a bit because you need to have maintain your posture all the time. They're also jolly useful if you're doing something really long-term uh, exercise like a running a marathon, about which you should ask Miss Carter. Fast twitch muscles, on the other hand, are ones that you would use for really short uh, bursts of activity. And Basically, you're talking things like sprinting, where you might be doing a mixture of aerobic activity and anaerobic activity, and things like um, hitting a rounders ball, for example. <coughs> where it's a kind of, you know, one-off action by your uh, arm muscles. You'd be using your fast twitch fibres to do that. So you need to know the characteristics of each sort of fibre. So, slow twitch muscles tend to use aerobic respiration. So, if you think back to the core concepts and the cells, stuff that we did, you think, right, okay, well these have got to have, therefore, if they're doing aerobic, they're going to have lots of mitochondria. And you'd be absolutely right to think that. Fast twitch muscles tend to use anaerobic respiration. And therefore, because that takes place in the cytoplasm, they have far fewer mitochondria. Less. Anyway, there we go. That's every round thing. Uh, the reason that they're called slow twitch and fast twitch is that slow twitch muscles contract reasonably slowly by that ratchet me uh, mechanism. Whereas fast twitch muscles, you get in the picture now, contract quickly. These can contract for a long time. Um, and unsurprisingly, these don't contract for a long time. So these are contracting for a short time only. So you can see that effectively as we're building up this table, we're doing exactly the opposites. These ones, obviously you don't want them to go into fatigue, you don't want your muscles to be aching all the time just because you have been uh, standing in a queue for the pictures for an hour. So these ones are ones that fatigue very slowly, whereas these are far more fatigable um, purely because they're doing anaerobic respiration. So these are what we would call fatigable. I can't spell it too good. Well, I'm going to make it up. Deal with it. Check it in the dictionary. So, um, colour of the muscle. Slow twitch muscles are associated with sort of what you would call dark meat. If you think about chicken, we're looking at chicken legs. The reason that they have that is that they've got many capillaries. And you guessed it, this sort does that. I'm not writing all this down. You can, you can do that yourselves, that would be lovely. You could just put the opposites in that. We've got um, 
high myoglobin. So again, if you think about what we did uh, last year, we did those sort of myoglobin curves, which is acting as an oxygen store. So if you've got high myoglobin, you've got lots of oxygen available, even when your muscle is undergoing strenuous exercise to fuel that aerobic respiration and keep that going for much longer because it's storing the oxygen and then releasing it when the oxygen levels are falling. Uh, it's a very um, dark red pigment, so hence this is the red meat. Um, and we've also got, and we'll come back to this, uh, glycogen stores. Now glycogen is, as we know from the core concepts, a store of glucose. So our glycogen stores in our slow twitch muscle where we're effectively releasing energy um, fairly well are quite low and then obviously the higher in the fast twitch muscle because it's going to need to use that up very, very quickly. And lastly, the diameter of the myofibrils, which are these sort of bundles of sarcomeres, our myofibril diameter is low. So you should definitely now pause this video and fill in the rest of that table. And we're going to go on to making ATP. Now, if you remember from the core biology that you've done, ATP is made of a pentose sugar attached to adenine, a nitrogenous base, attached to three phosphates. And if we want some energy out of that, we're going to break it down into ADP, which unsurprisingly has its pentose sugar, its nitrogenous base, two phosphates, and of course we'll release phosphate from that. So we've got various ways of making ATP in these cells. We can do aerobic respiration. And this starts off, I don't want to go into this in too much detail, we'll do the detail of respiration soon enough. But it starts off in the cytoplasm with a series of reactions called glycolysis. And then moves off into mitochondria. got a series of reactions there and for every one glucose molecule we put in we get 38 ATP out which is massive. There are also other ways of uh, generating uh, energy and we can generate energy anaerobically where we can only do glycolysis. And the problem is that glycolysis generates things that need to be recycled, but usually those are recycled in the mitochondria. So if we've got glycolysis going on, we have to make something else with those things to recycle them. And what we make is a lactate. <clears throat> During that process, one glucose will only release to ATP. So it's not a terribly efficient way of generating the energy that the muscle needs to contract. So effectively, if you're aspiring aerobically, you can keep going forever and ever and ever and ever because you're making 38 ATP each time. Anaerobically, you've got two things going on. You're only getting a little bit of energy out, so you can only use that for about 30 to 60 seconds and that's partly because lactate causes fatigue to the muscle. It makes it ache and uh, it causes fatigue and has been linked in the past to cramp formation. So what do we do when the oxygen levels are low? So you'll remember from animal transport that if you're doing really strenuous exercise, that eventually you come down into that bit of the oxygen dissociation curve 
where you're sort of down here, and hemoglobin really hasn't got a lot of oxygen to give you. So we could respire anaerobically for 30 to 60 seconds, but before that would happen, in order to give you sort of breathing rate time to catch up with the whole thing, we've also got another chemical in muscle cells called creatine phosphate. <coughs> And the key bit of this chemical is its phosphate holding capacity. So actually under aerobic conditions what you would do is you would um, sure make your ATP for use but you would also use some phosphate to phosphorylate your creatine so that when your energy, when your oxygen starts to run out you can use that phosphate to add to ATP so this would be phosphate from creatine phosphate to add to ADP to make that little bit of additional um, ATP to allow your muscle to continue contracting. That's only good as long as the creatine phosphate lasts. And sadly, for every one phosphate that you need to make a molecule of ATP, you're losing one creatine phosphate molecule. So that only lasts about 15 seconds or so. So, where are we getting our stuff to do all these um, reactions of respiration from? So, I've talked about glucose yielding different numbers of ATP. Um, look, and we've mentioned glycogen. So, actually glycogen is a really good store of glucose. It's well, that really lovely branch structure and releases glucose quite quickly. And so your muscles have glycogen stores to release the glucose to do these uh, respiration reactions with. So that's your sort of the first port of call for a source of glucose for your muscle, um, muscle contraction. And in fact, athletes, you know, so people who are going to run a marathon, um, do carbohydrate loading and the, and the principle behind that is that the glucose that they're taking in from the starchy carbohydrates, breaking it down into glucose and using that glucose to really bulk up those glycogen stores in the muscles which will then release uh, their glucose to fuel that respiration. In addition we can also use fats and fatty acids and uh, use, we use the glycogen first, then you move on to things like some of the proteins will start to break down and eventually you'll get to your fat stores and uh, start using those. Now that takes quite a long time and so that's the principle of aerobics classes going on quite a long time because what the fat ladies want to do is to get rid of their fat stores. You actually need to exercise for quite a long time before you start breaking into those. Okay, I think that's all I can tell you about ATP and slow and fast twitch fibres. Don't forget to finish off that table as you're watching this video.